Zubera Tukagov is a fighter that you might have seen in the media more frequently than you've seen in the Octagon. But he's due to step into the cage at 284 and as part of Team Habib, or what was formerly known as the artist formerly known as Team Habib, you know that there's going to be a hell of a lot of talent stepping in there with him. So it's worth having a little catch up on his story thus far. <laughs> Zubera is originally from Chechnya, not Dagestan if you can believe it, and he's a master of hand-to-hand combat as well as combat sambo, and his MMA record is 25 and 1. His professional MMA career has been fascinating from the start, bursting onto the scene by winning a eight-man one night tournament in 2010 and he had a similarly successful if not quite so busy start to his ufc career when he dominated douglas silver de andrage in his debut and got the unanimous decision victory and for a while he was looking like a top prospect and the organization was treating him as such he's an incredibly unorthodox fighter who confuses his opponents as they're never really ready for his awkward attacks. And he showed us just that in his second outing with the organization when he got the first round finish over Ernest Chavez. But Zubera's upward trajectory has hit a few speed bumps. In fact, since 2013, Zubera has had nine cancelled bouts and only two of them were due to his opponents pulling out. Now his latest fight at 284 was supposed to be against Joel Alvarez, uh, an opponent that suggested that the UFC ain't doing him no favors no more. Yes, Joel was supposed to be coming into the fight off of a loss, but that was a loss against a top prospect in Armin Sarukian. Before that, Alvarez was on a four fight win streak and he is a complete animal. Fucking guys up left, right and center. He's got both slick boxing and submissions and he tends to get guys out of their early doors. His record is like a menu of submissions. Delicious. And he's got a notable win over Chiego Moises who we just saw had a really dominant performance at 283. Got him out of there in the first round by a standing TKO. Rare. Tasty. We love to see it. Before that, Moises had never been TKO'd or KO'd, and he'd only ever been beaten by Islam Makhachev. And Alvarez is big for the lightweight division, whereas Zubera is a featherweight moving up. But Alvarez had to pull out due to visa issues, adding just another speed bump to the list of challenges that Zubera has had to overcome in his career. Zubera was pulled both from his fight against Hakeem Dawadu at UFC 253 and his bout against Lucas Almeida at UFC 280 due to weight issues. In the latter instance, he was even losing consciousness trying to shift those last pounds. He said he did everything he could, his body just let him down, and that's when the decision to move to lightweight was made. But weight hasn't been his only issue. He was handed a two-year suspension after his loss to Renato Moicano in 2016 because he tested positive for the banned substance Osteri. But that wasn't enough for the UFC to lose interest in his shining star. Oh no, laddie. As soon as that suspension was over, they pitted him against Lerone Murphy, and a lot of people said that they did that because Zubera was a sure thing to beat Murphy. Like, Murphy was this, this inexperienced Brit who was basically being thrown to the lions. And they were obviously like gunning for a big win and a big statement to be made by Zubera to get him back in the conversation, remind the fans who he is and get them hyped for his return. Dubair was the biggest favourite on that card, coming in as high as minus 600. And Murphy was the biggest underdog at plus 415. But it didn't work out as anyone had hoped, apart from probably Murphy, although 
still not split draw. De Bear has also had a few injuries keep him from the action and had to undergo knee surgery in 2021 after having to cancel his original matchup against Ricardo Ramos due to the issue. He did manage to both get back that fight and that win though, and that was the last time we saw him fight over a year ago. But the most interesting, let's just call it what it is, the most dramatic reason for a little break in proceedings when it comes to his career was his involvement in the whole Habib Connor drama. Let me take you back to that fateful night at UFC 229. It went a little bit like tappy tappy, jumpy jumpy, brawly brawly. Zubera was one of the fighters that entered the octagon to go after Connor while Habib was busy chasing after Dylan Danis. Afterwards Dana said that Zubera would never fight in the UFC again. Love when Dana makes absolute statements. Oh what a guy. And the commission slapped a one year suspension on him from fighting at all. But Habib, who wasn't even really getting a tickle on the wrist from Dana, both threatened to quit and accused the UFC publicly of withholding his pay. And he said if anyone, he should be the one punished. And if they won't do that and they continue on this course of action, he'll just step away. So naturally, the UFC pissed their pants, gave in to all his demands. And on top of that, the commission reduced Zubera's suspension to just 35 days. Now, despite Habib defending Zubera and saying he didn't have anything to do with it, there was some evidence that his involvement may have been premeditated. Connor had gone on social, as Connor do, and accused Zubera of treason for taking orders from Habib, referencing the kind of history of conflict between the two regions. And Zubera had also gone public and said that he was planning on settling this with his fists. Although he had planned to wait until after his next scheduled fight, which was against Connor's mate, Artem Lobov. Mate at the time, not mate now. However, while all the suspension stuff was getting sorted out, that fight was cancelled and not rescheduled. But Lobov, oh my, he has not been able to let that one go. He's retired now and he says there are two things that would bring him out of retirement. One, a shit ton of cash. Two, the rescheduled fight with Zubera. But since he last said that, I wonder if things have changed slightly due to, you know, tensions at home with Conor McGregor. <laughs> that was exhausting. And we can't really be surprised if the UFC are trying to find legitimate ways to get Zubera off the roster, especially now as Habib doesn't have as much pull as he once did. Don't get it twisted, he still has pull. Yes, he's an exciting fighter, I love his style, he's still got incredible potential. But after seven cancellations and a butt-ton of headaches, you just gotta think, is it worth it for them? But, perhaps just due to lack of options, the replacement that the UFC have found for Alvarez against Zubera isn't gonna present the same potentially career-ending challenge. Elves Brenner, where do we begin talking about Brenner? No, seriously, help a girl out. You'd be entirely within your rights to not know who the fuck this is. Zubera has looked out. He's gone from standing toe to toe with one of the biggest prospects in the kind of lower end of the lightweight rankings with an incredible future career ahead of them to welcoming in someone on their UFC debut. Now Brenner has a 13 and three record and is fighting out of the incredible, shiny shooter box in Brazil. Great gym, a lot of big names, a lot of legends, Charles Oliveira. And as a lightweight from that gym, we can all go ahead and assume that he gets rounds in with old Charlie Olives. He's been fighting professionally since 2016 and has remained fairly consistent and active with two or three fights a year. And as we alluded to, for those in the know a moment ago, with the shooter box reference. Most of his wins have come via submission and more specifically armbar, but he's never fought 
anywhere near the same level of competition as Zubera. In fact, most of his fights have just been in local, regional promotions. Now, if Zubera had managed to do the improbable and get beyond Alvarez at 284, then in my book, he would have deserved another chance from the UFC to prove what he can do, especially as the weight cut issues won't be a problem in this new division. But does this new matchup allow him the same grace? Probably not. He can probably at least keep his contract with a win. You know, it's an undeniably m much, much easier fight for him. So the most he'll really be doing is treading water until he does have that chance to prove himself. And this matchup also will not really give us any answer as to how he's going to be able to hold himself against these bigger boys in this new division. Like, he is smaller. It is such a stacked division. And that includes one of his teammates and Bezzy mates, Islam Makachev. And it would certainly make this interesting if Zubair uh, flourishes here and starts climbing his way up towards old Islam. I wonder if Islam would vacate, like, you know, with Aljo Marab Sitch. We're getting ahead of ourselves anyway. He needs to win first. He needs to get in there first. R r rewind. He needs to get in there first. Let me know how you think Zubera fares in this new matchup, how much of a I mean, luck he got by not having to face Alvarez, and how he does in the lightweight division as a whole. And give the video a like and subscribe while you're fiddling around down there, oi oi. And this was a surprise Wednesday video, or midweek video, who knows when I'll put it out, probably Wednesday, let's hope so now, I've said it. What was I talking about? So I'll see you at our usual Sunday spot.